black people. It's all about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody moving me. Like Dr. King, we make it plain and simple. Bringing knowledge and fire at reality simple. Reality simple. My black people. It's all about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody moving me. Like Dr. King, we make it plain and simple. Bringing knowledge and fire at reality simple. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the gatekeeper or the host of this particular program, known here on the internet as the mighty, 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 mm, angel snub number seven. I am your brother, and hopefully your friend, Tariq Ibn Ra. It is so wonderful, and we should be so happy that so many of us are out on social media. We are walking the highways and byways of this nation. And we are reaching out to those who are like ourselves. We are the descendants of slaves born in America. We have many descriptions. But being a descendant of slaves is the common denominator of which some of us wish to deny. But we cannot deny the oppression, the discrimination, the evil done towards us, no matter what we call ourselves, living in this nation because we have dark skin. So you could call yourself a Christian, but you would still be lynched. You could call yourself a Muslim, but you still would be made a slave. You can call yourself whatever you want, but when your black child walks down the street and gets shot down, the person who is a non-black, clearly in the wrong, clearly has some problems, but they can go to court and the court We'll release the murderer, and we all know it is because of the color of your child's skin. We understand these things. However, what are we going to do about it? The only way we can change this condition is to unify all of these who are under or face this type of abuse. Many of us agree on that point. However, we have a problem because there are two kinds of people. They both clearly understand the situation that we are in, but somebody has a loyalty that is not in accord with what must be done. Never in a time in history have an oppressed people, a victimized people, an enslaved people wished to love and romance and continue to be part of the nation or even the civilization built by those who oppressed them. But this is what we find in the so-called Negro born in America. So you have two forces 
who perhaps are sincere in their belief and their wanting to unify us so that we can be better and so that we may get a beast off our back. You want this beast off your back. You want to stop this oppressor for what? There are two kinds of black people in this nation. And a decision must be made in order to bring forth the correct result. What is the correct result? On one side, we have black people who are sincere. And I'm not going to say, and maybe we should not call so many of you Uncle Ruckus, Uncle Tom, dark Europeans, because you are sincere in your heart that you want what is good for black people. However, this group of black people, you have your faith not in God, you have your faith in Caucasian people. After 400 years, for some reason, perhaps it is due to fear. Perhaps it is due to the fact that you don't want to admit that deep down inside, you not only do you have fear, but you are a slave and you are afraid that you cannot live without the Caucasian pink people. But you don't want to admit it. Because to admit that would mean verification that what Caucasian people have said about blacks, that you are an inferior and you can't make it without them, is true. But in reality, you're still doing the same thing because you have faith in them. There is a reason why you do not want to separate and leave them. There's a reason for that. I don't care what our ancestors did in this country. I don't care what they built. You don't control nothing. You make no laws. I don't care what our contribution has been made to this nation. If you are not wanting to put yourself in a position to take it, then your only option is to separate or just admit you are a slave. And you don't want to admit that. But a choice has to be made, whether you or me like it or not. On the other side, we have those like myself. I don't have faith in Caucasian people. And I understand the great contribution that my ancestors left and continue to bring to this nation. However, I understand it is best that I conquer the enemy. And if I am unable to conquer the enemy, then I know for the best benefit of myself and future generations, although we work, although we live in this nation, whatever we do, create business, whatever success that we have, it is a success that we use for ourselves and the ultimate goal should be separation. Because this is something that your God requires. According to religious teachings, God does not tell his chosen people, any oppressed people, to integrate with their oppressors. God speaks very loud and it is clear in religion and there is no preacher that can refute what I say. You can love everybody. And you can love, love, love all you want. That does not mean we should not separate. I love you, but we can't get along. It is best that we separate. So God told Moses, you go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Not integrate. Not jump in the bed. Not have babies with. Go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Separate from them. The ultimate goal for anything that a black man do, it should be separation. 
unless of course there is a, a with no doubt now we are given equality now we are treated fair but after 400 years this has not happened because these people are not interested in it and you live in a delusional delusional and fantasy world why would they all of a sudden want to change their mind and who are they you don't have no pride in yourself you have no value in yourself who are these people that you gotta beg and plead please give us some rights please treat me equal who are these people they have never loved you I don't care how many times they put you in their bed they don't care nothing about you so there is a group of us who claim we want black unity who claim we want better but you want to stand with the massa you want to stand with those who list our ancestors who offer no apology who have made no attempt to rehab the injury to a people they destroyed they have no empathy towards us and continue to do wicked things then there are those who are seeking true liberation and even if this did happen even if we did have equality and fairness in this nation it is still best for the sake of a people that you show and prove to yourself that yes indeed I can make it without Caucasian people yes indeed I call myself a king and I will be king I will be queen but those who want to sit around and beg Caucasian people for their friendship and love you verify just what the racists say that you are an inferior and without them you can't make it look at you and that's why you scared to separate because deep down in your heart you know that maybe what they say is true how do you think they become the great world power they become you gotta take a chance you gotta face your fear and step out into the world y'all don't want to do that you want to hold on to your massa hand show me master help me master so are you a comfortable Negro you just want to be a comfortable slave or do you really want true, true freedom justice and equality and don't hold up a sign say I'm a man your actions your behaviors will verify and show without a shadow of a doubt I'm a man I don't have to say it my actions and behaviors speak louder than words but at this time these demons your oppressor continue to call you boy because that's exactly what you act and behave like and until you change your ways until you show that you can be independent from this racist you deserve to continue In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the host or the gatekeeper of this particular program, known here on the internet as the Mighty, Mighty. One more time, Mighty. Uh, uh. Angel Snup Nup 7, I am your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I do not hate white people. I understand them. Many times 
if you claim to be part of this movement of pro-blackness, if you do not say that you hate the white man, hate the pink people, then you are considered and some may view you as an Uncle Tom, Uncle Ruckus, a coon, and some may even use my own description, call you a dark European. However, for me, I know exactly who and what the enemy is and what they look like. I am not delusional. I make no excuses for them. However, for me, I am a just person. I am a fair person. And I have a problem with bringing harm to the innocent, only to the guilty. If you are a just person, if you are different from the oppressor, why would you wish to bring harm? Why would you hate people you do not know? Why would you want to hate and spread evil propaganda against those who are not guilty? And I ask you to bring me evidence so that I can see for myself that what you say is true. When I speak about Caucasian or pink people, I very much describe the type of person that I'm talking about. However, I do understand. And if I am incorrect, please show me different. I am listening to you, not hearing you. I am listening to you. Because there are exceptions to every rule. When we say all Caucasian people do this, all Caucasian people do that. Do you realize and do you understand? To my knowledge, there are at least 27 types. 27 types of Caucasian people. And out of that 27 types of Caucasian people, they may have benefit from the slave trade just like you have become a victim every time you spend a dollar you are actually helping your oppressor so the slave traders have become part of the world economy and you trade with them but did not actually participate in the crime and many would say well if they knew that was wrong, then why are they participating? Then why are you spending those dollars driving these cars, all that benefit the oppressor? We must be fair. We must be just. We must not be like those who we complain about. There are exceptions to the rule. So when I say pink people and Caucasian people, I never say all. Because to say all, that is not just. But if you hate, it is easy to say all. Because you are not just. You are acting on emotion. Again, there are 27 different kinds of Caucasian people. And out of these 27, I would like for you to show me with evidence. And nobody has done this yet. I've been asking this question since 2010. Show me how all of these 27 Caucasian people caused, participated in how they lynched, hang, and did the, the evil things that you talk about and are angry about, which brings us hate. This is much like when a pack of dogs attack somebody. Now, you have the dogs that actually attack a person. Then you have some dogs that was just in the pack who was just sitting in the cut, just watching. They did not participate. But when the people, the police show up, they want to kill all the dogs. Is that justice? Is that right? For me, I have a conscience. And for me, I only want to punish the guilty. 
I understand that the other dogs were on the scene, but nobody is bringing proof that these other animals, that all the animals participated. You see the evidence of the blood and the and whatever evidence on the dogs that actually bit somebody, but you're going to kill all of them. Is that just, really? Well, then, I guess we have different mentalities. And then, for me, I see you are no different from those that you complain about. Because you are not just either. And so maybe, with this mentality, it is good that you continue to suffer and get what you are reaping. You are of hate. And hate is given right back to you. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad told us. And he called the white man the devil. And he, and he described the making of a devil. This was not to make mockery of the Caucasian people. This was not to cause hatred of the Caucasian people. This was to bring us an understanding of the Caucasian people. This type of mentality of those who are guilty for that which you charge them with. To understand a person's thinking, their nature. Because if you can understand their nature, then you know how to deal with them. We, after all this time, after Elijah Muhammad taught us, after our own experience with these people, we still do not know how to deal with them. Don't you know there are people who actually will sleep and lay around dangerous animals? They lay around snakes and hippopotamus and bears and crocodiles. And the crocodile and the snake and the hippo, they don't do anything to these people. Because these people understand their nature they know what sets these animals off. These are very dangerous creatures. Some people play with dangerous animals. They understand the nature of the animal. Everything has a weak spot. If you understand this Caucasian man, even though he is strong, powerful, intelligent, and smart, if you understand the nature, he has a weak spot. And you cannot defeat him with physical force because he is the master. He is the god of physical force. So he is also very good and very intelligent. He has a weak spot. When I was learning how to break a board, it is not the fact that I'm so strong that I can break this board. I understood how to find the weak spot to strike in the board in order to break it. When we hate, the emotion of hate causes us to have what thinking. It denies us logical and proper thinking. So having a what sense of thought causes us to Bring into existence a, for a problem, a warped solution. A delusion of solution to a real problem. Thus, you have been screaming black power, liberation, black nationalism. You've been screaming this for almost a hundred years, if not longer. And you still stay a victim to this people that you hate. Hate is good if you take that energy and it is used properly. But if it is not used properly, you only dig yourself the hole that you are trapped in, you only dig yourself in deeper. We call the white man, we call the pink person, we call the Caucasian people, we call them savages the same way that they call us. There is an old saying that music soothes the savage beast. If that is true, and if these Caucasian people that we speak of 
they have turned savage and are savages. What is it? What is one of the best things that black people know how to do? Black people know how to do since slavery is make music. And when we made music in slavery, although the master might have been cruel, although the master might have been mean and low down and dirty, but when the black man took out the fiddle, when we stood up in a circle and we began to dance and play music, that master who was a savage, that master who was so cruel, even if it was for a few minutes, music, music soothed the savage beast. It is not running around talking about kill the cracker. It's not running around talking about black power, exterminate the white people. All these things speak very tough. And you are so weak that you cannot carry them out. And if you did try to carry them out, the reason why you have not even attempted is because you know that this beast is a very difficult one, a very intelligent one. He's not an easy person to slay. But if you understand his nature and you begin to understand and create the proper music, then perhaps after 100 years, when you sing the right song, dance the right dance, then maybe you can soothe, bring into existence the music that soothes the savage beast. We have to begin to think smarter. There are those who don't like Brother Polite and call him a coon, but I view Brother Polite as myself. You must begin to understand the nature of the beast. The nature of the threat. You must understand your own limitations. You must understand how to make the music that will soothe the savage beast. When, during the kosher process, when animals are slaughtered, unlike in the slaughterhouse, in the culturing process, an animal is not frightened. They soothe the savage beast. So that animal is calm when they take that animal's life. So that adrenaline, that poison does not go throughout the body. There's a reason why we are filled with fear. We eat meat. We eat animals. That was murdered due to fear. And we eat that poison flesh. There's a reason why we are so docile. Because the animals and the plants that we eat are domesticated. And we also are domesticated. So the only thing that we can do is talk. We can't understand how to confront an enemy. And understand the nature so that we can free ourselves from that which looks like we cannot free up. Unfreeable, is that a, a, a word? But anyway, I guess I think that you get where I'm coming from. Let us stop the hatred and begin to understand our situation, understand the enemy. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Tip on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the host of this particular program, known here on the internet as the Mighty, 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 mm. Angel Snub Nub 7, I'm your brother and hopefully your friend, 
Talik Ibn Ra. I would like to give a shout out to all of my three three listeners. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> Woo! You know, it's amazing of how you only have three listeners. You only you only average three views per video, but everybody know who you are. I, that's amazing how that how that happens. It it it, it truly is. <laughs> Woo! Uh, it's nice to have a good laugh. I would like to dedicate this particular video because it was inspired by a sister who just made an excellent video, brought us wonderful commentary. Speaking about Tommy Sotomayor and how the faces of racism have changed from pink to black. Caucasian or pink supremacy has a spokesperson or persons who look just like us. Wow! This sister. Her YouTuber, her YouTube username is Lashindo, something to that effect. Thank you, sister. Excellent work. Keep the job up. Keep the job up. Keep the good work up. And let's keep the pressure on all these dark Europeans, all these coons, all these shines and ham bones. Let them know. That they will be challenged. They're not just going to come into the public with their foolishness. They're evil and not be challenged by those of us who are good. And evil exists because good people do nothing. But these people who claim to be good. We are going to take action against all those. All enemies that have decided to try to make mockery. And continue to uh, attack this black community. So again, sister, you're fighting a good fight. And you inspire these few words. You said in your video that Caucasian people or pink people are trying to be victims. Wow. That is an awesome statement, and I agree with you. Now, at the same time, you have black people who have become pompous and self-righteous, and they believe they are filled with this moral character. They suppose they're trying to show that they have some kind of pride. They run around telling us uh, uh, we should not be victims. I'm not a victim. We need to get up out of the victim mentality. Now we're trying to get out of the victim mentality, but yet it's still those who made us victims in the first place, they are trying to be victims. Let me let me break this down to us. We are so naive to the tricks laid down by a deceiver, by a devil. There's a reason why the white man or the Caucasian people are called devils. A devil is a deceiver. A devil is a trickster. Here you are running around talking about, I ain't no victim. But these people, every day, trying to be a victim. Every day in the United States of America, in a court close to you, people are claiming to be victims. And some of these victims get paid. But here you are. You want to take your lumps and go on about your business while everybody in the world is in court every day 
playing the victim role. You such a fool. You let these people trick you. If you go to court and you are the plaintiff, you are so dumb and stupid. Why would you listen to the defendant? When you are in court, you are the victim. You are making a claim that the defendant did something to you. But in our case, these silly Negroes are stupid enough to listen to the defendant. Oh, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. Yeah, yeah, you right. Yeah, yup, 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 yup. Yeah. You right. Duh, 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 duh. That's you. Not me. Because I'm going to court and I'm going to fight for mine. Ain't nobody going to tell you something for your best interest. They're going to give you advice for their best interest. If you are suing somebody for $100,000, they're not going to give you information. They're not going to advise you in a way so that you can win $100,000 from them. But y'all are so naive. You're so dumb. You're so easily tricked. Because you're so in love with your masa. You're so in love with your masa. You believe everything masa say. I ain't no victim. And then you say, I ain't no victim. We should not participate in victimhood. You don't even know what it is. You have no idea. You don't know the legal term. You don't even know what the definition is. And you don't know how to apply what a victim is. That's why they got you food. They, that's why they got you bamboozled. That's why they made an idiot out of you. You are dunce. Because they know you are functional illiterate. Negroes are the only idiots. Dark Europeans, y'all coons and silly people. You the only ones running around here talking about uh, uh, we need to expose uh, our Ill, we need to clean house and expose our ill behaviors. You're the most dumbest idiots in the world. Ain't nobody on this planet running around. Yeah. We got to expose the ratchets. We got to expose the thugs. And everybody on this planet got more ratchets, more thugs than we could ever imagine. But you don't see them running around. We, we, we got to be clean. We, got, we, want, we need to show the negative and the positive. You positive. You are a positive dork. You are a positive fool. A true first class idiot. And these people sit around and just laugh and laugh. Look at these dumb ass Negroes. What is a what is the perfect example of victimhood? You don't even know what it is. The perfect example of victimhood is your Jew, your pink Caucasian Jewish people who keep talking about the Holocaust. Now, we're not supposed to talk about slavery, but they can talk about the Holocaust every day. In fact, in some countries, if you speak about, if you speak against or don't believe in the Holocaust, they want to put you in jail. Now, these this is a, 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 an example of victimhood. Jewish people run a lot of the media. They are into poli in the, the politics of this nation. Jewish people are everywhere. They control many things in this nation. But yet and still, they keep throwing in your face the Holocaust. Six million Jews died. The Holocaust. Six million. Okay, damn. Will you shut up? You run CBS, NBC, ABC, the cable network. You control Hollywood. You control half the Congress. What the hell? You at victimhood. Then you have your average silly Caucasian person running around because they can't get a job. Reverse racism. Reverse racism. Every time I post a, a video about Caucasian people, here comes some idiots. They write, anti-racist is a cold word for anti-white. The black people taking over our country. 
Then they always bring up in your face were the FBI statistics. Black on white crime. Black on white crime. Here you are. These Caucasian people have killed countless, raped, murdered, and slaughtered billions of black people around this earth. And you're going to bring, and you have the nerve to come in my face, talk about some black and white crime. You run around and try to take over Africa. Remember this little thing called colonialism? You try to take over black nations? Now you want to talk about anti-racist equal is a cold word for anti-white. The blacks, these dark people trying to take over Caucasian countries. Reverse racism. You wouldn't give a black man and deny black people employment because the color of their skin and now you want to play victim. Brothers and sisters, you need to wake up your mind. There's a reason why these people are called devils. Not because the devil exists, but there's a characteristic here. You are dealing with master deceivers, master tricksters. What is domestic abuse? Study what domestic abuse is. And anybody, any of you who are victims of domestic abuse, you know exactly what I'm talking about because you know that you are the victim. But the, but the perpetrator of the crime will sit around and talk about and try to blame you for what they've done. Well, I wanted fried chicken. She baked the chicken. I told him to go to the store and get me some milk. He brought orange juice, so I had to beat him up. Domestic abuse works both ways, but usually it is a bigger male abusing a smaller female. You and I, black man, black woman, the descendants of slaves born in America, you have to realize that we as a people, we are in our unnatural relationship. This was a forced relationship. Our ancestors were not in love with these people. They was kidnapped. We are here due, due to the commission of a crime. A crime against humanity that these people have never been punished. Then they turn around, benefit, get rich. Get wealthy from what they've done to us. And now you want to turn around and try to call us the perpetrators. We are hurting you. Reverse racism. Anti-white is a code. Anti-racist is a, is a code for anti-white. Black on white crime. It would take hundreds of years for anything that black people around this earth have done to even get close in comparison to the evil that you have done to black people, non-Caucasian, uh, non-pink people on this planet. It would take generations. But see, they depend on you to be silly. They depend on us to be foolish and fall for the trick, fall for the lie. That's why it's necessary to try to silence my sister's voice, my voice, any of us who know better, who don't fall for the trick. Wake our people's minds up. And you stand up to these devils and you tell them, get behind me, Satan. Stop falling for the tricks and the lies. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition, another exciting, rather exciting edition of the 
realities, reality, realities, temple on earth, internet ministry, of course. I am the host of this particular program known here on the internet as the mighty, 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 mm, angel snub number seven. I am your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. The question that has been brought before us to answer within these next few minutes, the question that has arisen is should black people, should a black man or woman have pride in that they served in the United States military? Should we be proud because we wear the uniform of the people that have oppressed us and continue to do evil towards us for the last 400 years. And what brings me to this subject is that even among so-called awakened people, I've seen among the so-called pro-black, black conscious, and black national type people, they have pride. My daddy served in the army. My mother served in the Navy. So-and-so was in World War II. So-and-so was in the Vietnam War, Korean War. Should we have pride in that we participated not in our own army, not in our own militia, but we give our lives sacrifice and we die in the military of those we know who are enslavers, warmongers, the creeps, the skunks of the planet earth. And you have and truly you want to be prideful? I would think we should be shamed. Let's talk about this issue very quickly. And clearly, you probably already know my position on this matter just by what little I just expressed. The Revolutionary War. We are taught that the first man to die in the Revolutionary War was a black man. And that, and the name of that black man was Crispus Attucks, the first one to die in the Revolutionary War, was a black man. And then, of course, the Revolutionary War, whereas Caucasian American pink people, whatever that is, they decided to fight for their freedom, for justice for equality, separation, and independence from their motherland called Britain or England. And in this war, not only did this black man, Crispus Attucks, die, but Native American people and black people, they also our ancestors and Native American ancestors participated in the Revolutionary War. Well, they died. We sacrificed, we suffered. So these people, we thought we was part of this nation. We thought that we was part of everything that's going on. We thought that we would in some kind of way benefit so our ancestors they participated and responded to the call to arms 
against an enemy. What was the result? The result was for the Native American people all their lands taken away from them. And then they were placed on reservations and these reservations was the worst of the land. So they had to continue to depend on those that taken the land away from them. And then those who took the land away from the Native American people, they forced their religion and their culture on Native American people. Fortunately for Native Americans, some of their culture was able to survive even after all this time. This was the result of Native American people fighting the war for Caucasian people. What was the result and what was the benefit given to Christmas addicts and all those black people who died in the Revolutionary War? Not too long after, after the war, they made it legal that black people become enslaved. So it is possible the same black men that participated in the war, they became slaves. It is possible. They also might have been freemen. But we do know that after the war, they made legal and called the black man and woman inferiors and savages. And from there, they made legal and a way of life slavery for the next 300 some years. Oh, wow. This is what you get for becoming. And it sounds harsh, but it's true. You became a guard dog for another man, a flunky for another man. And this is what. He done to you as a reward. Least to say, didn't pay you well or did not pay you at all. So we have Vietnam and we have Korea and we have Iraq, World War One, Two, and so forth, Afghanistan, and this place never stops. Fighting and killing somebody. What do you get as a soldier coming home from war fighting for your country? Many of these soldiers. You had to ride in the back of the bus. In the military and outside the military. What did you get when you came home? Many of these soldiers got a rope around their neck. While they was wearing their uniform, fighting for their country. And what did their country do for them? Call you a nigger. And still call you a nigger. You a nigger soldier. You a nigger in the military. You a nigger in the army. You a nigger in the marines. And you really expect for me to sit around and listen to you while you have pride being a guard dog for racists. That have given the black people no benefit. How much land have they given you? In fact, they taken, stolen, and lied and cheated us out of acres and acres of farmland. Destroyed our towns. Some of you don't even know that black people had towns. And towns turned into cities. They did not want to see an all black city, an all black town, an all black state. An all black Congress, an all black Senate, not just a black president. That's what you was on your way to. But your country that you fought for denied you all this and you earned this. Nothing was given to you. The black man and woman in America, you earned everything that you gotten. You begged and you marched and you fought and you died. 
you pay equal taxes and get none of the benefits of this nation. Scraps. Always have to fight for your rights. And the little rights that you get benefit other people. Or they try to do to destroy what you earn. And now they call you a welfare recipient. After they have destroyed you and take away your means and don't give you what you earn. And you want to sit around, my grandfather fought in all these wars. You should feel sad for your grandfather, sad for yourself, for being a guard dog to those who hate your guts. Regardless to why you went to the service, there should be no pride fighting for somebody who hates your guts. And there was no, and still to this day, no benefit. Muhammad Ali was asked to go to Vietnam. And Muhammad Ali said, I ain't doing it. I'm not going to kill no man that has nothing, that has done nothing to me. And they took Muhammad Ali's title away from him. And they wanted to place Muhammad Ali in jail. But the, but under the Constitution, due to religious belief, Muhammad Ali was able to get that off his shoulder. But they harassed this man, made mockery of this man. He's unpatriotic because he wouldn't be their guard dog. Muhammad Ali took the Olympic medal that was around his neck and threw it in the river. Threw it in the river. Y'all hold on to all you prideful in the scraps and the little garbage, the little biscuits, like a brother told me, that y'all get. I would be shame. Not have pride. And when you become in the military, they brainwash you to become patriotic and loyal to your masa. And even though you talk about African spirituality, black this and black that, the loyalty to this beast is still in you from your days in the military. However, there is a different kind of black man. There's a different kind of black woman who have served in the military. And they do feel shame because they understand that they was used and exploited. There's nothing prideful about being exploited and abused. So they take their talent and they know they must use whatever they learn against the racist. There was a group of black men in the 60s that returned from Vietnam, I believe. And the Ku Klux Klan was terrorizing this black neighborhood or town. And these black men, fresh from the war, had to show these KKK what war really is. And they came home and took them out. How many of our enemies have you taken out? Or are you trying to take out? You undercover taken out? None. You don't have that type of attitude. When you work for the military or the police, you ain't nothing but a guard dog for racists. And then you have these other people who are intelligent guard dogs. What's his name? That Armstrong fella and Manning and this Tommy Sotomayor. A different kind of guard dog. There was a Negro say here in the military said he can't wait to kill pro-black people. That should tell you something. My time is out. But there's nothing. You should not be prideful in being a guard dog for the races. You should feel shame. No black people. It's all about the unity. 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 Like that the king, we make it plain and simple. Bringing knowledge to empire and reality simple. Reality simple. My black people.